I want to talk briefly about a concept in organic uh, chemistry called retrosynthesis um, and just how it can help us uh, think backwards in terms of reactions. So, for instance, if we had a molecule like this and we were asked, well, how would we synthesize it? Um, that's one of the highest levels that we need to be able to achieve as an organic uh, chemist is to be able to look at a molecule and, and figure out how we would synthesize it. Uh, and the question is, is then we've got to draw on uh, a lot of different knowledge. Um, and it can be quite daunting to kind of think about all the different things that might happen in order to make a compound like this. So within the context of organometallic reagents, um, I, I want to actually talk about this, this molecule over here and how we can use retrosynthesis uh, to, to help us. Now, retrosynthesis is actually a very simple thing, and I'm not actually going to go into full detail. In fact, we do deal with it later on uh, in uh, uh, our courses, but not, not the second year course. So um, this is just a very simple looking at it. And, and the way retrosynthesis works, uh, simplistically, is we decide that in a reaction we are somehow forming a bond. Um, and so in principle, we could say, well, what happens if that bond wasn't there? And would that be then easy to form? So uh, let me do this as an, as an example here. Let's, for argument's sake, say that this bond here um, was a bond that was formed in the reaction. And the way we would do that then is we would actually just redraw this um, and we use this backward thinking arrow. Um, that's not important but, uh, for the course. But what we do is we redraw it. There's three carbons there, but we leave that bond out. So we've, we've left it out and I'm going to draw everything else in as it was uh, like that. So essentially all I've done is I've deleted that bond over there. And, and then what we do is we recognize that in organic chemistry, it's all about nucleophiles and electrophiles. In other words, we have a minus going to a plus. And so what we do is we make a guess and we say, well, one of these carbons must have been the minus and one of them must have been the plus. So we might decide that the minus is on this carbon over here. In other words, this carbon was the nucleophile in this reaction and this one over here had the plus. It was an electrophile. Um, or we might do it the other way around. We might decide that this carbon is the minus and this carbon over there is the plus. Now, um, in retrosynthesis, uh, when we make that decision, we are now at the point of sort of drawing on the type of knowledge that we have and the experience that we have. Now, um, this carbon, just any carbon being a plus or a minus, um, there are a lot of different things that we can, uh, we can do. For instance, if we decide this carbon was a plus, um, the real reagent might have looked something like this. Uh, in other words, that carbon is now the electrophilic carbon, so a plus on this carbon would actually be this type of molecule over there. Um, if this carbon was a minus on it, um, what we're needing is the carbon to be a nucleophile, in which case, for the minus to be there, we need to actually use an organolithium type reagent, or organometallic reagent, I should say. So we actually want some sort of metal on there. So it might be a lithium or it might be magnesium bromide. So, so this would be a reagent which would satisfy this being a negative uh, charge over here or a nucleophile. Um, so the two options, plus and minus, would work in both cases over there. We look at this uh, molecule over there and we decide, okay, what, what would it look like if we had a minus over there? Now, now that's where the first trouble comes because actually that's quite difficult. To, to get a negative charge on something, the molecule that's got an OH over there is, well, I, I myself am not coming up with any really good idea. So you should think about it. Maybe, maybe you will come up with something um, and we can discuss it. But, but actually a plus on this carbon is actually a lot more realistic because if we look at that, a plus on that carbon over there, whoops, I've made a mistake there, I've put too many carbons, a plus on that carbon would just actually be this over there, uh, an, ol uh, an aldehyde, so sorry about that. Um, this is effectively a plus on a carbon. We've got a pi bond to the oxygen. And, and that kind of looks very much like that. So in other words, if this was the nucleophile and this was the electrophile, this reaction would actually work very nicely. In other words, what we need is we need this reagent and this reagent. If we take that and that together and react them, we're actually going to get that product um, out of the top over there. So 
what you should do now, I'm going to give you another example, but what you should do is go and look and see what, what would happen if you broke that bond over there. Um, do exactly the same thing, draw it out, and then decide where the pluses and minuses could be and whether that made sense or not, um, and just see how you can make it. Okay, so here's a second example, and we're looking at a molecule that has a triple bond in it. And again, we're going to sit with this, um, this thought that should be going through our minds, that uh, if we're going to make something like this, somehow a bond has been formed, or bonds have been formed from smaller molecules, uh, less complicated molecules. And one thing that we're going to start to hopefully start to realize is that when we are making the bonds, and we can, you should go through this process of breaking all bonds that are possible, but as you get a bit more experience, you start to see patterns that make certain bonds more attractive to break than others. Uh, and in this case, from our organometallic um, chemistry, we know that we can actually make carbon-carbon bonds using terminal alkynes. So, so this bond over here is quite likely one that would break. So what we do is we then draw out um, the two uh, bits. We just delete that bond so that we can uh, see what we're going to do. So that we get these two bin, uh, uh, bits over there. These are not real molecule. I mean, if you had to take this, this would be toluene, benzene ring with a, a methyl on it, and this would be a simple alkyne. Those two are not going to react with each other. We need to make these two carbons react with each other. So one of them is going to be minus, and one of them is going to be plus. Um, and hopefully you will already appreciate that the likelihood is that the alkyne is likely to be the minus, because we know how to generate that very easily. Um, if we have the proton on this carbon over here, it's very easy to remove that because its pKa is quite low, at about 25. So we can remove it with strong bases, but it's not crazy. Um, so sodium hydride would work, or one of the N minuses, um, sodium amide, for instance. Um, so we can easily remove that and generate this as a nucleophile, which means that this carbon over here needed to be the plus. Um, so if we can make this carbon plus, we can get this reaction to occur, and we can form that bond. Um, so you can't buy a bottle of toluene with a plus on it over there, but the equivalent of this. So these two things, the words that we use, it's not examinable um, at this stage, uh, is we talk about them being synthons. Um, and synthons are not real molecules, but rather this idea that we can find a molecule that represents this, or find a molecule that represents this, um, and if we can, we can get this reaction to occur, and we call these things uh, synthons. Um, and so this one, uh, again, uh, the easiest way to get a plus on a carbon is we need to make it into an electrophile. What do we do? We just put a leaving group on it like that over there. Now, I choose this leaving group because uh, bromine, because it's a good one for SN2 reactions. Bromines are always a great go-to uh, halogen if you want to uh, uh, put that on. Um, it's a nice leaving group, uh, good leaving group, but at the same time not as reactive as iodine, which can be a little crazy. There's nothing wrong with putting it on, uh, and, and more reactive than chlorine. Um, so it, it just, it's a good choice. Uh, so, so this would be the equivalent um, molecule for this synthon. Um, I put on the good leaving group. Uh, if you'd said, okay, but a plus on a carbon can also be a carbonyl, the problem with that is then we would have ended up with an oxygen over there. So uh, it is a good, does make the carbon plus, but we end up with the wrong functional group on. And then this one over here is actually a lot easier. Really, we don't need anything fancy because to generate the negative charge over there is actually just having the hydrogen over there because we can just treat this with a strong base, remove that proton, and then these two would react and we get that product um, over there. All right, um, there's too many triple bonds in there. Obviously, I hope you realize that means I'm saying these are equivalent to each other. This is equivalent. Um, so, again, you can do the same thing on this molecule, and now just think about, you know, what happens if this bond was broken? Can we, can we disconnect in that way? Um, and likewise, if you really want to just spend some time thinking about things, is why don't you just disconnect other bonds and see is there anything that you know that you'd be able to use in order to synthesize the same molecule but via a different bond disconnection. This is the creat creativity part of organic chemistry, and it's quite an important one um, for us to be able to think backwards and think creatively about the way that we could possibly make a molecule using the chemistry that we know. Okay.